Thank you for joining us today on Coffee With. I have a special guest today, David Mitchell. Um, it's hard to say David Mitchell of because you're of the Bazinski House, of the real estate business, of Nana. You're of a lot of things. Um, so, gee, it's hard to know where to start with you, David. What should we start talking about first? The name of my real estate company. Okay, what's the name of your Warren Realty. Warren Realty. So we have the Bazinski House and Warren Realty and just opened Nana at 1205 Washington Street. And what is Nana? Nana is a shop, a retail store. Okay. We have three-dimensional artwork from Stella Sy that is a local Vicksburg artist mm -hmm. who takes reclaimed items and creates art. And then we have clothing, women's clothing from a shop in Dallas. You know, I think there was an article in the newspaper about Stella not too long oh, ago. Absolutely. That Gordon Cotton wrote. That's right. And I called and talked to her because I thought that was so interesting. I'm going to have to come down there and you look at her You have to, stuff. absolutely. Yes, Changes indeed. every day. I'm like um, Nana, I mean, I'm like Stella un unsophisticated. I just have started <laughs> doing that kind of stuff. I wouldn't dare show it to anybody, but I do think it's really interesting. I'm going to have to come down there and look at that. And her stuff is really good. Yeah. She's she's creative. Really good. Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. Um, let's talk. Let's start with Bazinski House. Okay. How about that? Good. Bed and breakfast. Historic tour home, bed and breakfast, events facility, personal residence, and home to Warren Realty. It's just a house of all trades. It's a house trying to pay its mortgage. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, how long ago did you and Andrew buy that? We bought it in October of 2006. And what have you done to it since then? Complete renovation, top to bottom, everything. All new electrical, plumbing, heating, air conditioning, roof, replastered all of the walls, redid all of the floors. Anything and everything that you can imagine. And it's open for tours. It is open for tours. Do you have to have an appointment or do you just come in or what's the deal? Either or. Okay. We All say right. by appointment simply meaning you call and we'll give you a tour. You don't have to show up at any particular time of day. Okay. And I've been down there, oh my goodness, that the woodwork in your house is... Um, I don't even really know how to describe Beautiful doesn't <laughs> There's really... There's a beautiful, beautiful wall of doors between the first two parlors that I understand are unique to our house. Out of all of the visitors we've ever had, no one's ever seen any doors like them. But even in... And I don't remember the front room as much as I do the, the back of the two parlors. It seems like the woodwork goes up really high. Is, am I our, remembering that correctly? I'm sure. Downstairs, the... The ceilings are, I believe, 14 and a half feet high, and so the door moldings, the window moldings, all of those things take up the full wall. Yeah. Very large architectural pieces, very large doors. Now, when y'all did the renovations, had that all been painted? Did you have to restore all that? or was We did that... not strip anything. Okay. Anything that was painted, we repainted anything that was... Stained wood, we left stained wood. Well, thank goodness nobody ever painted that wood. That would have been a travesty. Right. That would right. really, as and beautiful as that is. There was just one room in the house that it had not been painted, and the stairwell <clears throat> had been encased in a frame wall that kept it from being painted. Mm -hmm. So we were very fortunate in that way. Okay, what do you want to talk about next? Because you've got so much going on. We do have a lot going on. We're trying to... Find what fits. Find what works. Find what will happen. Well, the it sounds house, like a lot of things are working. The way we're trying, the Bazinski House has two bed and breakfast guest rooms. Okay. So we do have overnight guests that come and stay with us. Um, and we really enjoy, we've had very good luck with our guests. We've traded for Annie Glass. We've traded for signed copies of books. We've traded for pieces of art. Um, and of course cash <laughs> and we also have the downstairs available for events so people come there and rent the space for showers and weddings meetings just whatever we've had a ladies group come and 12 of them play cards one night so we rent the space by the person and leave it up to you so what is the history of the Bazinski house the house was built in 1860 there was a lot of a lot of speculation. A lot of people said that our house was not antebellum. It was built in 1970, that it could not possibly have been built before the war. 
And now are you saying 18 or 19? 18. 18, okay. 1860. Okay. And so we went through a couple of years giving tours about this great history that was written down and how the family had built the house in 1840 and it was destroyed in the war and rebuilt in 1870 and so it's not actually antebellum but we were proven wrong. The this last owner of the house from the family had actually paid the lady from Vicksburg to do a complete history of the house and she proved that the house was built in 1860, that it has never been damaged or destroyed, and that it has stood exactly as it stands today since 1860 until today. And we are the first non-family members to actually live in the house. Oh really? Well that's interesting. Y'all should be on that um, show on, I think it's HGTV, If These Walls Could Talk. Have you ever right, seen that? Right, I haven't. No, we just recently got cable for the first time. <laughs> we used to have rabbit ears and um, decided to break down and get cable with our bed and breakfast guest room. So well, we're... you know what, that means you have a lot. <laughs> I don't know. If you don't watch TV, it means you have a lot. Um, okay, well, we were sitting here visiting earlier, and, and I said, gosh, I found out, I find out the most interesting things by getting to interview people, and I found out that you were a professor at Southern Methodist University in Dallas. I taught English rhetoric there, and I also was their coach of speech and debate, so I took the SMU speech and debate team all over the country competing and, and coaching them until I came here. I and technically am not a professor. That is a big... Right. Taboo in academia. I am. I was an instructor gotcha. of English rhetoric at SMU. At SMU. For how long? For six years. Do you and miss it? I miss teaching. I don't miss grading papers. <laughs> wouldn't do it again. And I wouldn't do it again. I told. Uh, I came here and taught at Hines for a short period and told them when I left I'd come teach for free if they would pay someone else to grade all the papers and. There aren't any takers. <laughs> Funny how so, that works out. Exactly. But no, I don't technically miss it. So you've got, we've talked about Nana. We've talked about Bazinski House. Well, the other day we really all of this evolved out of a love for old houses and a love for saving old houses. And the first property I ever owned was in New Orleans and it was a condominium out in a in a school building from the 1700s, the late 1700s. And I didn't have to renovate that property but ended up renovating it several years later. But from there I went back to Texas and renovated my first house and that just started the ball rolling. We bought our first house in Vicksburg was on Confederate Avenue, we bought for $10,000, and it was covered in two feet of garbage. The entire interior of the house and exterior of the house, the whole property. And so as we stopped through the house, it felt really sturdy and secure, so we said $10,000, why not? Well, when we got all the garbage out, took three industrial dumpsters to get all of the garbage out, we started falling through the floor because the house was being actively eaten up termites. So that was a big endeavor as far as renovating every aspect of a property and naively I thought we could go on to something like the Vizinski house and that that just about did it. That was a How big long did it take y'all to renov renovate the Vizinski house? Well we're still working on it yeah. but a strong three or four years. Mm -hmm. And are you going to do it again? If I had the money, I would. Yeah. I mean, you like... Probably, yeah, I fall in love with the house. I feel like I have to save the house. And in saving the house, I often... And I also convince myself I will never leave that property. I've told that to myself at least five times, that this will be my house forever. And so I don't mind putting more money in it than the market will bear. And five times, of course, I've Maybe. overspent. And so we've got lots of creative ways of trying to sell properties. But the Bazinski house, uh, that you could really make that home for the rest of your life. It's such uh, a beautiful place. And I actually will have to. Yeah. <laughs> There's no question. That will be a family home forever. 
So you're not originally from Vicksburg. You you tell me that you're from Texas. Right. So how did you end up in Vicksburg? Right. Well, my my entire family is from Vernon, Texas, and Wichita Falls, Texas. That's halfway between Dallas and Amarillo. My mother married uh, met Emmett Atwood from Vicksburg in 1980. They dated long distance between Texas and Mississippi for 10 years, and after those 10 years, they married in 1990, and she moved here with him to live. And my sister followed and went to Millsaps and is now in Mississippi, and my grandmother came until her death, and so we've been coming here for 30 years, and in 2006, we had had enough of Dallas, and first said we were going to move to New Orleans. Um, started some investing in New Orleans, realized we didn't want to be there, we'd rather be in Vicksburg, and so we came here, and have been here ever since. It's a great place to live, isn't it? It's wonderful. I love it. It's here. wonderful. I really do. Um, what have I not asked you about? Because you have got so much going on, it's hard to know everything. What have I not asked you about that you want to tell us about? I don't know. I'll tell you like I used to tell my students when I taught. I would always make everyone introduce themselves on the first day of class, and so of course I always had to introduce myself as well. And as I told them that when I grow up, I hope to be a studio artist, and that is what I hope to return to one day if time allows. I had started that back in college, so that's where my desire lies. I never could commit to being the starving artist, so I kept trying to find that backup job that would support my art, and I haven't found that yet either, so. Well, you, you know, still have plenty of time. I hope so. You really do. I hope so. David, thank you so much for coming and having coffee with me today. It was very enjoyable, and I'm going to go down and check out Nana. Good, I hope so. Thank you. Thank you.